Hi, my name is Hugh McKee. I am a developer advocate for the Aka platform at Lightbend. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Aka Cluster Split Brain Resolver, which is a pretty interesting piece of software. It's uh, primarily responsible for dealing with um, network issues in running Aka clusters, and uh, in particular network partitions. So in this video, we're going to be digging into what is it a network partition. What is the split brain resolver? How does it work? So what you'll learn in this video is we're going to use a demo project that you will be able to download if you'd like and uh, experiment with. You know, you can, what I'll be showing you is you, you, you'll be able to take this demo project and pretty much repeat uh, what I'm doing uh, in this video on your own. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for this particular demo though I was not able to make this work on Windows and and I'll kind of get into why a little bit later but basically it has to deal with setting up um, mul multiple local hosts and then creating rules for simulating uh, network partitions. I It'll work on a Mac, it'll work on Linux but um, I was unable to make it work on Windows. If anybody knows how to make this work on Windows I would love to hear from you but uh, unfortunately for those of you that are on Windows this demo, um, uh, I, I just can't uh, make it work. But in any case, uh, we'll be you know, looking at this demo dashboard that, it, uh, that comes with this project. And this dashboard visualizes uh, running, a, a running a cluster. And the, the dashboard is a, you know, just some demo code that I wrote, some JavaScript that you run in the browser, and is part of this project. So with this dashboard, we'll be able to see what happens when nodes in the cluster um, get split off or you know, you know different things happen and we'll, we'll be able to visualize that so we'll, we'll be taking look a look at that you know through this dashboard to see as we experiment with doing different things to a running cluster how the uh, split brain resolver reacts to that and how it deals with different thing different pain I guess that we can inflict on on the cluster so if you want to follow along what you're going to need is, it's fairly straightforward. You just need Git, you need uh, Java 8 or above, you need Maven, and then the project itself is in this repo in GitHub. It's under my name uh, in, in GitHub, McKeeh3, and then you, as you can see, the, the repo name is aka-type-java-cluster-spr. So you grab that thing, clone it on you know, your local system, and you can uh, start playing with this demo. So let's get started with it. All right, so what we're going to do is run the demo, and I'm actually going to do it in two parts. In the first part, I'm going to run the demo without the split brain resolver enabled and show you some of the steps that I'll have to manually go through to deal with a, a network partition and, and handling all the different nodes that are running when this type of situation occurs. And then the second part, I'll enable the split brain resolver and I'll um, rerun the, the sequence and we'll, we'll see what happens when the uh, split brain resolver is um, running and uh, we, we introduce a network partition. There's a good section in the ACA documentation on the split brain resolver that I'm showing here. It's, you just go to the ACA documentation under cluster and then you just do a search for split brain resolver or just split brain or something like that, it it's pretty quickly pops up. And then there's this section, and notice there's this, this section right here, Enable the Split Brain Resolver, which is this, this one line uh, that we'll see in a, in, the, in a moment in the actual project itself. So to grab the project, I'm just going to do a clone. And uh, on that URL that I provided earlier, and then go into that directory and then I'm going to edit the configuration file to turn off the split brain resolver. So that's down there in line 13. And then just comment it out and save the file. Type it right. And then I'm going to do a Maven clean package. <clears throat> and the, the way Maven is set up in this project, it's going to create a runnable jar. Uh, that, you know, that in includes all the dependencies, but more importantly, the project is provide 
provides a bunch of scripts that make it a little bit easier to run this demo. So I can, you can see some of the scripts here. All, all the files highlighted in red are the different scripts, but there's really a main script that you can access all these scripts from. It's called Akka. So I just do a dot slash Akka from the project directory. And it shows the different commands that are available. So there's this three sets of commands. And I've covered this in a lot of detail in another video about the Akka cluster, uh, cluster life cycles, using this dashboard, and so on. So if you want to get that detail, you can check out that video. But I'll just do a quick review here. So there's three sets of commands, Akka cluster, starting and stopping the cluster, things like that. There's things like starting and stopping nodes. And then some of the commands we'll be focusing on here are uh, these network commands, ne network level commands. So there's um, this uh, you know, enable uh, packet filtering for the Mac only. It, it's not necessary for Linux to enable uh, you know, simulating a network partition. And then there's things like this uh, localhost 2. You can create it or remove it. And so what this does is it allows the cluster, some of the nodes in the cluster run on localhost 1, and some of the nodes in the cluster run on localhost 2. And then when all, once that's all set up, then you can do a uh, partition. So the first thing I need to do is do the enable uh, command, and that requires sudo. So do that and then do the local host, uh, local host command uh, to create that so I can run the cluster on those uh, two IPs. You can see it creates 127.0.0.2. And then I can start the, the cluster. <clears throat> so I'm just going to do an ACA cluster start. And this, by default, starts up nine nodes. The maximum that this demo will run is nine nodes. You can run less, but you can, but you, you really can't run more than nine nodes with this demo. Of course, Akka can run more, but there's also a status command that's provided, so we can just take a quick command level look to see if the cluster is running. If it's running, we should see a bunch of nice uh, JSON come back. But the real fun is is using the dashboard. So there's a command to bring up the dashboard that's included with this project. Akka cluster dashboard, and if all is well, we see the, the dashboard come up. So this dashboard is just um, some JavaScript that's uh, you know, a web page with some JavaScript in it. <clears throat> and again, the, the other video really goes into this in some detail, but just as a quick review, what we're showing here is there's nine panels on the right, and each panel is showing what does the cluster look like from the perspective of that node. So there's node one, which is running on port 2551. And this JavaScript front end is just periodically sending a, a request directly to that node, and it's asking for, what does the cluster look like from your perspective? So from the, you know, node one's per perspective, it's running, and there's eight other nodes running. And this happens on all nine of the nodes that are up and running. So it's kind of a live way of probing the each individual node in the cluster to ask it what it thinks the cluster looks like. And then this is we'll get the diversions, especially when we have a network partition. So that's what's going on. So if everything's good and the split brain resolver is disabled, I should be able to turn on a partition using the Akka net partition on command. And what we should see pretty quickly is that we'll go into a split. So we've got a kind of a 5-4 split. And what you can see is on the top, the first five nodes here are listed with the, uh, you can see that they show, the first five nodes show green, but the bottom four nodes show unreachable. They show red. But if you look at the bottom four nodes, starting in 2, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, they can see each other the four nodes, but they can't see the top nodes in, uh, up, up above, the five nodes up above. So here's a split, and this is one of, really one of the main motivations that I had for writing this little dashboard, was to be able to visualize something like a um, network partition, a, a, a split brain. So we've got a classic split brain going on here. 
but we're stuck. You know, the cluster's in a bad state because five of the nodes can talk to each other on one side of the partition, and four of the nodes can talk to each other on the, on the other side of the partition, but this is not the way a cluster should work. A cluster works as a cohesive whole, and we've broken that. So how do we resolve it manually? Well, the first thing we need to do is do a down. So there's a, a script ACA node down, and the parameters are uh, fairly simple, but the, there's a via, you know, so dash dash via. So what this means is that via node one, it's going to send a message to node one, telling node one to send the commands to ACA to down node six, seven, eight, and nine. So if I execute this command, what we should see is these nodes go away in the first five. So the first five nodes now don't show any red. They're all happy. But the, we haven't done anything. The bottom four nodes are still running. All they know is they can't talk to the top five nodes. The top five nodes are still running. But as far as they're concerned, the bottom four nodes are gone. They're no longer part of the cluster. But the bottom four nodes think that um, the top five nodes are still part of the cluster. They're still aware of them, but they can't talk to them. So we need to also down those nodes. So to do that, we use the down command again. But this time, we do it via, say, node 6. So we're going to send a message to node 6, telling 6 to down 6, 7, 8, and 9. So let's try that. Now we can see they all show kind of this uh, purplish color, and they go down. So now the, the bottom four nodes have shut themselves down. And this is an example of keep majority, which is one of the split brain resolver strategies, where you say we have our odd number of nodes that are running. Uh, we have we have a split, and the split brain resolver looks at this and goes, "Well, where are the majority number of nodes running? Uh, we'll keep that part of the cluster running, and we'll shut down the part of the cluster that has the minority number of nodes." There's also a tiebreaker feature um, that you can you can look up in the uh, documentation that deals with the situation where they say there's an even number of nodes on either side of the partition. So it can handle that as well. But the, the keep majority is, is by far one of the most popular of the strategies for the split ring result. There, there are other strategies that I'm not going to go into here in this demo video that you can look up look at, at the documentation. But I think for the most part, everybody, um, or many people find that the keep majority is, is a adequate split ring resolver, resolver strategy. So now that the, um, the nodes are down, I can uh, turn off the partition, and then I can start those nodes up again. So I'm going to do an ACA node start 6, 7, 8, and 9. And it's like I'm, you know, whatever the problem was, we fixed it, and now we're bringing those nodes back online, and they're joining the cluster. So this was the scenario of doing everything with, without the split brain resolver. So let me go through it again, but this time we're going to do it with the split brain resolver enabled. So I'm going to, first I'm going to stop the whole cluster. So I'm going to do an ACA cluster stop. And we can watch it stop here uh, in the dashboard. When everything shuts down, I'm going to go back and edit that configuration file, the application conf file, go to line 13, and uh, save that file. And then I'll do a Maven clean package to rebuild the jar file with the modified configuration file. And once that's up, I'll start up the cluster again and uh, we'll repeat the split brain scenario. So I'm going to start the cluster. And we'll, this time we'll watch it come up in the dashboard. So as the nodes come up, we should see them pop up here, start to turn green and so on in the dashboard here we go all right notice that uh, it doesn't all happen lockstep it actually it was really good there you could see different nodes were seeing that final node come back come online at, at, at a slightly different time but they all kind of converge quickly so we're back up to a cluster running with nine nodes and if i've done everything right if we enable a partition we'll just stand back and watch. So we should see the partition occur. And then within a few seconds, the split brain resolver will kick in. 
and we should see the bottom four nodes get downed. Let's see if that happens. Here we go. The bottom four nodes get downed, and we're clean. So this is really interesting because the split green resolver actually had to run on both sides of the partition, just like I had to do it manually, where I had to do things to the uh, send commands to the top five nodes to tell them to down, and then send commands to the bottom five nodes to tell you know, them to go down. Here, the split brim resolver was working on both sides of the partition independently, and it did all this housekeeping for us. So now we've recovered from the split brim. And I can wrap things up here by turning off the partition again, and then starting up those four nodes. And if all goes well, we should see them come in and join the cluster. So that's the split brain resolver pretty quickly in action. You know, it, it, the idea is that this, is, this should be one less thing we should have to worry about. Now, I had to manually restart the nodes, and that is something that is a consideration. However, if we're running in an environment like Kubernetes, which is like the most ideal environment for ACA clusters, that would happen automatically from Kubernetes. Because what would happen is the split brain resolver would shut down four nodes that were running. Kubernetes would detect that. And it would then um, see, well, hey, wait a minute. This, this application said it, it wanted nine nodes running, nine pods running. All of a sudden, four went away. And then Kubernetes will uh, start four new nodes to, you know, to bring it back to the requested number of, of pods or nodes running in the cluster. So it's a beautiful symbiotic relationship between Akka and Kubernetes, um, you know, where, where things really are completely automatic. You, you have a network partition, and the Akka cluster self-heals. Akka does some work, Kubernetes some work. They collaborate with each other, uh, you know, symbiotically. The, you know, they, they don't know that you know what the other is doing. They they're just reacting the way they're supposed to react, and the end result is exactly what we wanted to do, which is. We had a network partition, we were down at some nodes for a few minutes, we're back up, everything's good, and the application keeps running. So I hope this gives you a little bit of intuition and insight about um, how the ACA cluster split brain resolver works. What's next? Well, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you can grab this demo project, uh, clone it, build it, run it, experiment with it on your own. And you know, through that, hopefully, the intent is that you could learn more about Akka Cluster, about the split brain resolver, and, and things like that. You can, of course, browse through the uh, source code, tweak it, change it, whatever you like. And you can, you could also look at the JavaScript that's included in the project that is used to render the dashboard and how all that works. It uses a pretty uh, cool JavaScript library called P5JS that does all the rendering on the dashboard, which is pretty nice. You can also go to the ACA website. There's a ton of documentation there and uh, other resources related to ACA. It's uh, at ACA.io. And if you're interested to talk to us some more about ACA, you can always schedule a demo and uh, a demo for ACA cluster. Just go to the lightband.com site and look for the ACA platform demo registration link. I want to thank you all so much for uh, taking the time to uh, view this video. I hope you found it useful. You can reach me at my Twitter handle at mckeeh3 or through my uh, Lightbend email address. Thank you again.